I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke as retired. The silent service story you're about to see actually happened in World War II. For reasons that will become obvious, the names of the submarine and the men who sailed her have been changed. It is a story of two extraordinary achievements, one by the submarine, the other by an individual member of her crew. Our story starts early in 1944. The ship we will call the Tiger Shark was in for a routine overhaul. This was her last day in port before taking off on a patrol into the San Bernardino Straits area. And some of her crew are at a ship service store aboard a submarine tender for a little last minute shopping. Good evening, stopwatches. My own little, you didn't see me. Uh, I'm in a hurry. Excuse me, sir. Go right ahead. Got any stopwatches? He saw the last one just a few minutes ago. Huntley beat you to it. Did you just get yourself a stopwatch? Yeah, I got a stopwatch. I need it. You need it. That's right. I'm real interested in hearing that, Mac. I'll give you five bucks more than you paid for it. Sound like friendly of you, Mac, but it ain't for sale. Ten bucks more. Who do you think you are? Come on, come on I want it. I oh, want it. Oh, shove off, Mac. Why are you bothering me? Are you going to give me that stopwatch? Negative. Now beat it. Go join the Japanese Navy. All right, you guys, lay off. Why don't you be a good Joe and let him alone? I offered him ten bucks extra. Look, itty bitty buddy, he don't want cash, he wants the watch. Just like you do. Well, he got to it first. You read me? A million guys in the Navy, I had to draw him for a shipmate. Uh, forget it, Henley. He's a good Joe, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. He's just got an elephant on his back for some reason. I don't know. Within a few hours, Tiger Shark was underway. You wanted to see me, sir? Yeah, about Tompkins. Oh, did you break the news to him yet? Oh, I wanted to talk to you first, Tom. Uh, you know the man better than I do. What, what about him? He's not the easiest person in the world to understand. One thing for sure, though, he's a first-rate submariner. Subs seem to be the one interest he has in life. Aside from harassing his shipmates, you mean? You heard about that stopwatch incident at the ship's store. Oh, who made this? I did. I'm sorry, sir. I uh, didn't know. Have him come in. He should be waiting out there now. Tompkins? Tompkins? I think you know we've recommended you for a promotion. Yes, sir. I was wondering whether you fully understand the responsibility that goes with being a chief in charge. I think I do, sir. No, I mean in the broader sense. Stirring up resentment among the crew, it reduces their efficiency. The energy of every man on board has to be directed toward one thing, licking the enemy. Not 99% of the time, but 100%. Permission to say something, sir? Granted. Well, sir, I, I've always tried to... Well, try to do what you're telling me. But, sir, I don't know. It just doesn't come out that way. It won't affect my promotion, will it, sir? Your promotion's already come through, just before we get underway. You're made chief. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, you're a chief now. It's a big opportunity for you now. See, you can make the most of it. Yes, sir. Well, I hope I got through to him. We might be needing especially clear heads on this patrol. He's always had a big urge to be chief. Now he's made it. Somebody paid attention to him, gave him something. He didn't have to take it. Might just be the turning point. Oh, I hope so. Expecting a rough one, sir? Well, the Japanese are riding a lucky streak. Making the San Bernardino Straits area pretty hot for submarines. Did you get the 
not skinny on Tompkins. You made chief. I'm shuck. That don't bug me. I got some hot skinny on the patrol, though. It's gonna be a doozer. Oh, yeah? Where'd you hear? Where'd you hear? The skipper and me. We like that. He's my adopted son. You know that. Well, I just hope Mr. Big don't start pulling rank on us. That's all we need if we start catching it. What are you worried about, anyway? Tompkins made chief, so the world's coming to an end? It could. For us on this boat. Who's to say it's not gonna be good for him? Look at me. Before I made chief, I was nobody. Joe Blow, then boom. One of the fleet wrestling champions, now meet somebody senior grade, Phil Wilson. Yeah, you made chief. It gave you confidence. See what I mean? With Tompkins, it's nothing but a license to be a real heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? He still thinks it's funny. Yeah, I ain't gonna say you're wrong, Ernie. I just ain't gonna bet either way. Well, take a look at Ernie Lapchick, bookmaker senior grade. I'm giving six two and even. This guy gives us nothing but trouble. The next few days, the Tiger Shark sailed towards her assigned patrol area without incident. Then on the morning of the 7th of April, she approached the Japanese-held San Bernardino Straits. What have you got, Walker? I don't know for sure, sir. Well, it could be smoke. I think it could be one of those little rain squalls. What do you think, Tom? A little too far away to be sure, sir. Well, we'll know soon enough. Hey, uh, Fox schedule come in yet? Uh-huh. Hey, look, uh, got any latest news like they're, uh, having a rough time back home? Yeah, real rough. Hey, look, Hartley, I mean, look, I, 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 uh, I shouldn't make, make such a federal case out of the stopwatch. It's you know all I mean? right. No, 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 no kidding. I mean, I, I said it's all right. Forget it. How about that? Trying to bury the hatchet. He's a phony. Inside, he's still a stinker. You know, I don't dig it, Ernie. All this milk and honey all of a sudden. What do you got, spaghetti for brains? He's been playing Mr. I Love Everybody ever since he made Chief. Maybe the skipper will recommend him for warrant officer. See the picture? Yeah. Anybody fall for it? You kidding? Smoke, all right. Hand in! Dive, dive! <laughs> Battle station. Green board, pressure in the boat. Level up, periscope depth. Before you go, sir, been decoded, surgeon. Orders to evacuate the area immediately. They say why, sir? Didn't say they'll contact us. Said he asked for the senior prom or something. Secure from battle station. Secure from battle station. Up scope. Have a last look. You monkeys must have luck up your smokestack. You got something, sir? It's a whole task force. Yeah, it looks like the whole Japanese Navy. Cruisers. One, two, three, four. Four columns of two heavies each. 
screened by tin cans. One, two, three, four, five, six of them, all two stackers. I'll bet they're headed for the Marianas, Tom. Down, Scope. The Marianas, sir? Yeah, we've got a task force of our own there. There's a big battle going on. Those monkeys are going in to hit them from the rear. If we obey orders and evacuate, they'll murder our ships. If we stay here, surf's in daylight, and I'm warning by radio. I have to tell you, Tom, we may be signing our own death warrant. Captain of the Tiger Shark found himself in a position no commander would envy. Face to face with the choice between sacrificing the Tiger Shark or exposing our ships in the Marianas to an undetected attack from the rear. Up scope! See what they're doing, changing course, maybe you know, I doubt it. Uh, holding course all right for the Marianas. Uh-oh, trouble! One hundred fifty feet, rig for depth charge. One hundred fifty feet, rig for depth charge. Leveling off, one hundred fifty feet. I just started to come thick and fast. No time now to think about making decisions. There was only one thought aboard the Tiger Shark. Survival. As the explosions came closer and closer, Tompkins tried once again, perhaps for the last time, he thought, to make peace with his shipmates. Ernie? Yes? Yeah. Look, I've, I've been thinking, you know, maybe we won't come out of this, so... So take it with you, the kind of guy you've been. Let it eat you. You don't come to me for any pass to heaven. Ernie, I'm, I'm just trying to... I mean, you know, you're... Well, why don't you dry up, huh? All right, drop that. And that goes through the rest of you, too, you understand me? I don't need any of you, so don't talk to me anymore. You hear me? You hear me? the depth charge attack eased off, and with it the tension. But now the need to make that decision stared the captain in the face. And if you'd have asked him, he would have told you he'd prefer the depth charges. Well, the planes are gone. There are three airfields in the area. They'll be gone for very long. We're staying, Tom. Aye, aye, sir. I don't mind telling you I don't like sending men up to die without a fighting chance. This is one time I'm glad I'm not the captain. Well, the least I can do is tell him what the score is. This is the captain. We sighted the big task force up there. I guess you know their air cover spotted us and sent down its regard, but what I wanted to tell you is this. That task force is sneaking up behind our ships at the Marianas. They would wipe them out, unless we can get a message through, warn them what's coming. Now, when we surface, it's going to be rough. Very rough. In fact, if any of you pray, we can use all the help we can get. Planer up 60 feet. Now here's a message for the force commander. Urgent. Large enemy task force sighted latitude 1250 north, longitude 124.45 east, course 085, speed 16 knots, apparently headed Marianas. I haven't code that get it off as soon as we surface. All right, sir. And so the Tiger Shark made her first move towards the surface. It wasn't going to be that easy, however. High speed screws bearing 337. Turn on your speaker sound. 60 feet, sir. Up, scope. Three destroyers coming on fast. 100 feet, emergency.
Directly over us, sir. Take up the periscope, Jeff. Sixty feet, sir. Lay down again at 100 feet. Radio will start sending as soon as we surface. If we ever surface, they're pinning us down, bombers and destroyers. I see screws coming back, sir. If we don't get the message off soon, it'll be too late. For the Tiger Sharks crew, the deadly game of cat and mouse was harrowing. So much more so because there was little hope at the game's end. All right, we'll try again. Periscope test. Sixty feet, sir. They're not so dumb. What is it, sir? Guess what I was afraid of. Task force gone out of the Marianas. Left the planes and cans to pin us down here. Down, scope. Well, I've had it. Radio, ready with the message? Coded and ready, sir. And here we go. Surface. <laughs> And so at 0946 on the 7th of April 1944, the die was cast. The Tiger Shark started for what by all odds had to be eternity. There would be no turning back this time. Whatever there was to meet her on the surface, so it would be. She was a sitting duck. The coded message of warning went out the moment the Tiger Shark's antenna saw daylight. Once, twice, and again and again because for some reason there was no acknowledgement, no answer from headquarters, no word to indicate they had heard. The crew waited, 72 men holding their breath. Time was running out, but still no answer from headquarters. To make the sacrifice to save their ships was one thing, but to die without being able to warn them, to give your life for nothing, that was a bitter pill. Top side, however, the situation was surprisingly quiet. Seen the enemy destroyers and bombers were suddenly convinced they'd scared the Tiger Shark off, and they were heading to rejoin their task force. It looked like a prayer from the submarine had been answered, but the enemy must have prayed too. Hail Mary! Die! Die! Break for depth charge. Left full rudder. scored a rare direct hit, and the Tiger Shark was settling fast. I'll take a look through the boat, sir. But Lieutenant Hadley got no further than the control room. With Lieutenant Walker, the diving officer, too badly injured to carry on, the executive officer took over his station. By the time the Tiger Shark was passing a depth of 280 feet, the damage report started to come in. All compartments report damage, sir. Forward engine room pressure hull dished inboard. Rudder jammed hard to port. Motor room taking water fast. Pressure hull on the cruise washroom dished inboard. Main induction drains show a full stream. By all the standards of logic and engineering, that should have been the end of the Tiger Shark. But somehow she managed to cling tenaciously to life. While the crew fought valiantly, keeping their heads as they did their jobs. Watch your bubble. Watch the controls. Particularly Lieutenant Hadley, who had accomplished the impossible by leveling off the boat. <laughs> then.
Then another report came through, and it had the sound of doom. Fire in the maneuvering room. All power <coughs> lost. Fire in the maneuvering room, sir. All power lost. Without power, the Tiger Shark could only change her buoyancy and hope that she would neither sink to crushing depths nor pop into view on the surface. There seemed to be no possible chance of regaining power. The maneuvering room where the repairs had to be made was filled with a thick phenolic smoke, poison. But the poisonous smoke didn't stop Tompkins. With complete disregard for his own safety, he insisted on staying in the compartment alone to make the repairs, at least to try. No man should have been able to stand it. But Chief Electrician's mate Tompkins did, somehow. Though actively and violently ill, Tompkins kept working, repairing and replacing burned out wiring, doing whatever was necessary to regain power on the shafts. Ready to go ahead. Gonna stop. Stop it, Chad. Tompkins, are you? Yes, sir. Good boy. One of the shafts, the tiger shark was able to crawl away from the scene of the disaster and head for home. How are we doing, Captain? Make it back to port. With a little luck. She's a good ship. Tough. Captain's recommending you for the Navy Cross, Tompkins. Well, you saved the boat and everybody on board. A couple of the boys here would like to see you. M me and Huntley, we're, uh, we're a committee chosen to represent the crew. Uh, we want to say that we appreciate the... All we want to say is that you're Pretty great guy. No kidding. We got a present for you. Stop watching. Get better fast, kid, huh? Looks like he might be all right now, Tom. He's got an attention. And something he didn't have to battle for. And it came from where it comes, Captain. The crew. I'll be back in a moment. The action of the man we call Tompkins is considered one of the most outstanding examples of selfless devotion to duty in the annals of our Navy. Those who knew the conditions under which he worked considered them virtually beyond human endurance. His action will serve as an inspiration and a guide to generations of future submariners. Please join us again for another true story of the silent service. Music